welcome back to the shop uh, today we got something a little special uh, that I want to share with you guys and that is how to basically create vehicle emblems that either cannot be purchased anymore or for some other reason you have to come up with your own emblem you want a custom emblem uh, today I'm going to show you how you can actually do that the first example I have here is an emblem that was never actually created and it's just for demonstration purposes but hopefully you guys enjoy this welcome back to the channel today I am going to show you how you can create um, custom emblems or reproduction emblems or in this case I will show you an emblem that was never actually made uh, right here we've got the Fortec Iron Duke I believe the Fortec designation came after uh, later in the years of the Iron Duke um, after a few revisions but um, there were some uh, you know interesting uses of this engine obviously they use it in the mail trucks um, they came in some of the third gen Camaros as well as the Pontiac Fiaro um, and some S10s and stuff like that in the early years um, so basically it's just a little four cylinder just to kind of run down on what I'm doing and anyway the emblem in question is actually this right here it was just mainly a sticker that was on the air cleaner so um, it never really was an emblem, but for instance, um, we can just take an image. Usually, um, if I have the image or a, an emblem, I can actually just scan it and it basically presents itself as an image. So this will be applicable to pretty much anything, especially if you have the emblem, you can scale it to the correct dimensions. So anyway, what you want to do if uh, you don't have anything to go off of is just go on Google or wherever and uh, find a nice clear picture of it. Now I could have used that picture from the valve cover here and um, you know kind of skewed it to make it uh, you know 90 degrees uh, looking at it face on but in this case we're lucky we've got a nice little um, rendition of the emblem we can use. Um, so we'll go ahead and just copy this and then we'll open up uh, Photoshop here. Basically I need to separate the layers um, We've got the black layer, the gray layer, the red layer. So we'll just uh, start separating those layers and then we'll save them as individual files, convert them to an SVG and then to an STL. Uh, if you just want the cliff notes, there you go. So uh, you can just skip ahead. So let's get this thing cut out. Duplicate layer. One thing uh, I should note is um, when you're converting your files to an SVG, it's easier if the image color is black instead of any other color. The SVG converter seems to have an easier time picking up the edges a little easier, so I would highly recommend doing that. So once I convert all my images into an SVG, I then go ahead and import them using Tinkercad. If I have anything more intricate, I can use Fusion 360, but for something this simple, it's not necessary. Pop these in here. The scale's gonna be a little off, don't worry about it. Now if I actually had the emblem here, I could measure it. And then when we put the emblem together, um, you know, make things a lot easier to get at the right scale. Import. There you go. Hey, 80s colors right there. But yeah, you can just, you know, change the colors how you want. So this was gray. This right here was red. And uh, this was black, I believe. So, there you go. Here's your 3D. 
uh, emblem. Oh yeah, you can um, you can do a couple other things. Like uh, say we want this gray layer to be a little taller, we can raise it up two mil. I think two mil is a pretty good uh, good depth to it. There you go. Something as simple as that, just kind of uh, in a hurry. But um, yeah, so obviously this is the wrong size. You can take this and group it if you want, so you don't have to worry about um, you know anything coming apart while you're shrinking it down. Right now we're at 441 mil by 277 and a half. So we're gonna shrink this thing down. Yeah, that might work. So we can also ungroup it to bring our colors back out. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So we'll set this thing up on a printer and uh, see what it looks like. There we go. So, yep, that's what we're going to print. Um, I may turn this sideways and at a diagonal. That way I don't get my... There's some basic uh, settings you need to learn once you get a 3D printer and you eventually figure out. But um, I know my printer, every time it's on a flat edge like this, for some reason it stops in the center. And it picks up for just a split second and it'll work its way all the way up. So I don't want to run the risk of it doing that with this. It might be okay because mid-center is probably on an angle with this thing. But sometimes the way it sends the G-code is uh, not very efficient for my particular printer. Vortec emblem raised. All right, let's send this off to the printer. All right, bed looks clean, a little too clean. Um, I'm gonna need to put some acetone and ABS on it. for it to warm up. So here's our logo, I'm going to start just cleaning it up. So I like to print these emblems in ABS because I can use acetone to partially melt the surface of the emblem and it gives you a nice glossy and strong surface. And that's the quick and dirty way to produce an emblem. Here's another custom emblem that I've made specifically for the Daninator YouTube channel. Well, something came in the mail. 
two packages here. Oh, I'm sure the address. Nice car. That's a nice car right there. That's a nice car. Let's go racing, boys. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Yeah, that's hilarious. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I got a, I got an idea where I can put these. Yeah, probably on that. Got the Camaro sitting over there. That thing's running. That thing is not. So. Daninator, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. You guys should check out his channel. He does really amazing content. If there was ever an occasion. Mmm. Shit. That's my car. That's not nice. Daninator's got the fix. How about that? <laughs>